Like many of your peers, any reported blockbuster earnings off the back of higher oil prices. As we get into 2022, are oil prices going to continue going up? Is that something investors need to prepare for? Well, I don't think if the oil prices continue to go up, uh, uh, the, what I know that there is a, a gap between uh, supply and demand. It goes for seven years, and then uh, with two years of COVID, we didn't invest. The sector they didn't invest enough. You know that we are investing more or less 50% of what we invested in 2013. So clearly, uh, the demand is always the same. Now is rebounding. There is we are approaching 100 million barrel per day. So I think that the, this price is is structured uh, uh, strong because of the weak, uh, weak supply. So it's going to take some time before that uh, uh, oil companies and uh, NOC and countries start again investing. Also, in considering the volatile situation, yeah. that is not just uh, uh, the possible uh, demand uh, uh, reduction, but also that now we, we are investing intensively also in other source of energy. Right. So are we going to reach $100 a barrel in the near term in the next six months? I, I, I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. Maybe it can reach, but not for a long time. Because when, what's happened? When the price is too high, then there is less consumption. So it's not that people can spend a lot of money. And we saw also for the gas price that a lot of company, uh, energy intensive, that consume a lot of gas, they, to start reducing the activity, sometimes they shut down. So high price is not good. And uh, if they remain uh, high for a long time, then also the activity, so the demand in general is going down. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about industry, the yeah. energy con big energy consumer. Right. So any has brought in quite a bit of revenue. Uh, you have enough to cover your buybacks and, uh, and your dividends. What are you going to do with the surplus cash in the fourth quarter? No, at the moment, uh, we, we have now to follow our policy uh, strategy and investment. Uh, we have to wait at the end of the year. Clearly, uh, our priority in terms of uh, capital allocations or um, returns allocation is always uh, our shareholders. Uh, the new activities are growing in the new different sectors. We invested a lot in, uh, in uh, R&D, so now we develop a new technology uh, to fight uh, clearly the CO2 emissions. And then uh, in a volatile situation, my aim is to uh, have a very flexible uh, company, so a very strong uh, balance sheet. So that are the three priorities. I mean, you're spinning off uh, a renewable uh, energy component of the business. I'm wondering what happens to the existing assets that are not going to be part of this renewable wave. What are you planning to do with the legacy assets? Sort of the uh, old any, if I want to call it that. What I say, uh, you know, the uh, transition is not made just by renewables. It's not just wind and solar. Uh, that for, for us is a is a way to uh, attack and fight the, the, uh, uh, the scope three. So we try to, we want to give uh, uh, to our consumers uh, clean products. So that's why we put renewables, so electricity, green electricity with customers. But then we have uh, an additional uh, uh, technology that we are developing, and we developed already, like biorefineries, west, west to fuel, so, uh, and um, CCS to decarbonize the existing activity. So we have renewable for one side that are fitting our customers. And now, and from the industrial point of view, we are, we are developing and we develop uh, additional technology. So it's not that we are renewable and then we, did, we, didn't, we don't have any other things. Yeah. We have them a lot of different stuff. Okay. And for the retail and renewables unit, so Bloomberg reported that a valuation of 15 billion euros might be in play. When do you expect to list? So, um, first of all, I don't know anything at the moment about evaluation. I cannot talk about evaluation. That was a third party evaluation, clearly. Uh, the expectation is to finalize in 
in the in, in last year 2022 uh, uh, we try but it depends on the market condition to finalize everything in the first semester but in any case uh, the the time frame is 2022 okay and then in terms of the contracting for projects for planned offshore gas developments I mean those were delayed because of the pandemic last year are, are those coming back on track uh, and are those fields set for a, a start in the middle of the decade? So uh, we have different projects. Clearly, uh, we are on track because we started before in Mozambique with Cora. That is a, the first uh, floating LNG in Africa. And that is going to start production in the second, uh, in the second part of the year. Uh, then we had a project in Indonesia or Algeria, in Egypt. Uh, uh, that different kind of projects. We have a big, big project here, Ali Gasha, in, uh, in Abu Dhabi. Uh, for this project, we are still at the um, uh, evaluation of uh, cost, and uh, we hope to be able to help next year to have a, an FID. But uh, they, we have uh, many projects uh, in the next uh, two, three years for gas spatial, and that is very good because that is a very good window, at least of four or five years, where the demand of gas is very high and there is no oil projects. Uh, Claudio, you, the company is developing biorefineries across Europe, but I'm wondering whether you're taking some of those ideas here to the United Arab Emirates, maybe to help reduce emissions uh, in our ways. How much progress are you making there? So, as you know, we, uh, we have been the first to transform to traditional refineries in biorefineries. Our plan is to, between now and 2025, to build an additional one. Then we have uh, other four, four biorefineries to, to build in our plan. Uh, we are discussing also here but we are discussing uh, especially uh, Italy, Europe, and in Africa, because this biorefinery needs feedstock. And that's clearly uh, the best stuff is to really build the biorefinery where you have the feedstock, especially the primary one. We are, we are uh, quitting the, the palm oil that is in conflict with food, uh, with food but also with uh, primary and secondary forest and uh, we are developing different kind of primary and advanced uh, uh, feedstock for this refinery so we are studying different locations in different countries in Africa where we are promoting agro hub for this for this purpose and we are discussing so in the next future in the next strategy presentation we'll we'll give more light on this issue okay You've laid out some of the innovations and some of the priorities for any in the energy transition. I'm wondering where hydrogen kind of fits in here. Uh, do you plan to develop that? Well, uh, sure. Uh, hydrogen is, is in this kind of uh, uh, future development, existing development. We are, in Italy, the first producer and the first consumer of hydrogen because of refineries. So now the real demand for hydrogen is for from uh, refineries and ammonia chemicals, 50-50 uh, in the world. Uh, for our refineries, what we are we are we are moving on. First of all, capturing CO2. We are doing we are going to do in Italy and we are we are going to do in UK. And and we have two projects in the south of Italy for uh, in um, Jela and, uh, and for another. A refinery to uh, build some uh, uh, small size project at the moment for um, green hydrogen. Yeah. And we signed agreement in Algeria and Egypt uh, for green hydrogen as well. Closing question on VAR Energy, is an IPO still the preferred option? Uh, we are studying the restructuring uh, of the company. Uh, should be an IPO or should be something else. Uh, we, we are we are studying with our partners what is the best uh, um, opportunity to monetize and give value to our joint venture. Claudio, thank you very much for thank making you. time on your busy schedule. Appreciate it.